Okay, I think we're live. Yes. Cool. So, hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Uh, another week of the Fulton Career Cast. It's a Friday. Uh, I'm here with Caitlin Ardiff, uh, a Googler, uh, and we're excited to get going. Caitlin, how's it going? It's good. Happy, happy that it's Friday. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So let's jump right into it. Um, for our students' sake, could you kind of give just a little bit more background on yourself, especially at BC, kind of, you know, concentration, organizations, a little bit more about what you did at BC? Sure. Yep. So at BC, I was in CSUM and I graduated with a concentration in information systems, but I also did a double major in arts and sciences, and so I also have a BA in computer science. So I did both of those, but I was very actively involved with a variety of different orgs. I was a part of Start at Shea, so I helped build the website and talk to a lot of different, obviously, startups at campus during that. I also was a part of the Women Innovators Network, which was a really great program for people who were involved in both CSOM as well as MCAS and kind of combining both business and tech interests there. And yeah, I think I think that was it. But I graduated in 2018. So it's been a little over two years now. It's awesome. So very involved. And you got the double con the double concentration and major in CSOM and, and MCAS to go with it. So could you kind of tell us a little bit about your uh, internship experience before we get to the full time role? Sure. Yep. Yeah. So I had two internships while I was at BC. The first one was at Optum, which is a group of a part of United Healthcare. And I was a software engineering intern there in my sophomore summer. And then in my junior summer, I was an intern at Google in San Francisco in what was called a technical solutions consultant internship program. And what that means is that you have a technical background, they require like a CS or IS major, but also good business and customer facing skills. So kind of blends the sweet spot between solving technical challenges, but understanding the business requirements and speaking with customers and users about that. So like you said earlier, you can code, and you can talk to people, right? Yes, exactly. Good. And um, kind of now walk me through a little bit more as you did those few internship experiences and your concentrations in IS and computer science at BC. Could you talk a little bit more about how that helped you now in the full-time role with Google? Yeah. So I always knew that I liked to code and I took computer science classes kind of for fun, actually, while I was trying to figure out what is my concentration. And as I did this, I realized that I really liked to code, but I really loved my other core CSUM classes. So I knew that I wanted to do coding plus something else and just never knew what this something else was. I wasn't sure if this meant maybe I'd go work for a fintech startup and just get really involved there, or if I would do sort of like web analytics or how I'd get to kind of blend my skill sets together. And after my first internship, I knew that I liked being a software engineer and getting those coding skills, but then the internship at Google kind of confirmed that I wanted to be able to be cross-functional and try to really meet with customers, understand their problems, and then go able to be go build it. So after this, I landed into a role full-time in cloud. And my role today is helping large Google Cloud customers utilize the cloud most effectively, um, optimize for costs, resources, and just general architecture. So a lot of what this means is kind of interfacing with my clients and understanding what are the technical problems that they need to solve, whether it's helping them design a database schema or how to effectively load their data, even different machine learning problems and different ways that they can solve them. And then from there, I talk a lot with our internal Google engineering teams about different features that my clients may be able to use or maybe don't exist yet and how to meet the requirements at the end of the day. And with this, this does allow me sometimes then to go write a blog post about what I did and publish it there. Sometimes our engineering teams say they won't be able to build it at the speed with which my client needs. So I'll build out like a little version of it and give it to the client instead. So I really get to kind of wear a lot of different hats in my role today. And that's 
coding sometimes, writing blog posts, being similar to a product manager and understanding requirements and just kind of cross-functional all together. Awesome. And how would you say being information systems, just because the, the focus for this series is on information systems concentrations and kind of what they can do, how would you say that has helped factor into what you're doing professionally and kind of the skills you learned there to help build to what you do now? Yeah, I definitely learned a lot from my IS classes. And I'd say the one that was most impactful was Tech Trek for sure. And just understanding what are the current trends out there? What are the different roles like? And really communicating with our alumni and understanding what it's like out here in the working world. And in IS, I learned a lot of the kind of business decision skills that you need in order to be successful. So things that come to mind are like computers and management in Gallagher's class. I remember learning about all these new things that are happening that are kind of pushing old technologies out the door. When you analyze Netflix and how it impacted Blockbuster. And just making sure when you're building technology, you're thinking about what the future is, not just what right now is, and being flexible and able to pivot solutions. And as a whole, a lot of those business decisions that you kind of need have impacted how I think about problems today, and just being able to kind of understand the technology in addition to understanding the business. Awesome. Awesome. And in your current role, could you kind of go a little bit more in depth on some of the skills that you personally oh, use that you think are being flexed a lot now? Yeah, um, definitely coding. So I write a lot of Python, SQL, as well as I do some front end too. So TypeScript, which is stuff that I had never done before in my role. Um, so coding for sure. Aside from that, a lot of the kind of project management related skills that you get in all of your CSUN classes and all those group projects are really important. Just understanding how to prioritize different problems, act on them, and really work through as a team as well. Google really loves the phrase thriving in ambiguity. And I found it's something that I picked up a lot of group projects with and CSUN in general, just kind of how to understand when you're given a task of go solve X, and you have no idea how to get there, how to even figure that out. So I took one class. Gosh, I'm forgetting what it's called now. Um, it was part of the entrepreneurship concentration where you have to like design a business. And that was kind of it. The whole semester just think about design a business and come at the end with some sort of MVP. And that sort of like ambiguity and just kind of being scrappy and getting to a solution is really interesting. And I think it draws a lot of parallels to what I have to do today. Awesome. Awesome. And um, now the last kind of main question on the career that I have is around career path and kind of where, where, you know, what the route leads to. Can you kind of talk a little bit more about your career progression and kind of what's, what's, what could be down the pipeline? Yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> I feel like my manager asks me this all the time. What do I want to do next? Um, for me, it's, it's hard to tell. I found that I really love being cross-functional. In terms of I don't see myself as just a software engineer. I really do like kind of getting out there and talking to customers and understanding what they're doing and then getting to also build it. So there's a lot of different roles out there that I've thought of, such as like product management. It's very similar to what I do today. It would just be less coding. Um, there's also we have like solutions architect type roles here that would be similar again of talking to different customers and building solutions out, writing blogs and coding. And I think whatever it is that I do next, I still want to be in this cross-functional way of blending together different skill sets and degrees that I have, but I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> Fair enough. It's, it's, it's a big question. So I just was curious to know. So now, specifically for students, are there any qualifications and maybe you could talk a little bit about your career entering Google, kind of how they can get to a role like this and kind of any qualifications that there might be? Yeah, for sure. So we have this great program called the Cloud Technical Residency at Google. It stands for CTR for short. And this is a one year rotational program through different business units in cloud. So there's a rotation in our sales engineering org, so kind of pre-sales. If you were to build something out to help get a customer want to sign and come over to Google Cloud, 
There's also a rotation in my org, which is the post sales side of the picture. So kind of once your customer signs the deal, how to actually go about implementing it and finding out new challenges and feasibility things there. And then also our support organization where you really become a subject matter, subject matter expert in some of our different products. And in order to get into this rotational program, we look for a few things. The first of all is knowledge of web technologies. So this is things that you do learn in information systems today, as well as some computer science networking related skills. We don't require a computer science degree at all. This could be engineering we also accept, IS, IT, obviously Google, or BC doesn't have IT, but that sort of knowledge base is what we look for. And in addition to having those, you can even just show maybe you were an intern at a company and you built out using these frameworks and they just kind of look for an understanding of technology. Aside from that, we really do look for those customer facing skills. And where we find that typically with applicants is based on either internships, group projects, or different groups that they are a part of on campus. So showing that you are maybe the president of women in business or that you worked on an on-campus job or that you volunteered a lot, kind of just different ways to show that you're able to work in a team, solving the sort of complex challenges that would arise in your day-to-day -day life and when you work on a team at work with your different customers and things like that. So kind of this blend again of showing that you have project management skills as well as leadership and the technical parts that are needed to be successful. Great, great. Well, this has been wonderful and very informational. If I'm a student and I want to reach out, what's the best way I can get in contact with you? Yeah, you can email me directly. Um, feel free or add me on LinkedIn. I have a really unique name, so it's, it's only me on LinkedIn if you look for me. Um, aside from that, my work email, I would be happy to give to you after you connect with me over on LinkedIn as well. Just feel free to add a little message and let me know that you watch this and that's how you found me and I'd be happy to talk to you. Great. Well, I'll make sure to have your LinkedIn in, in the show notes as well. So Caitlin, I really appreciate the time and thanks for coming back and helping out BC. And I'll yeah. some students find this valuable. Sounds great. Thank you.